Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and my wormery just consists of this little corner in my basement where, as you could probably see, there's all kinds of bins behind me, bins that have worms living in them. And the worms help me break down my everyday household waste, kitchen scraps, paper, I can even bring leaves in from outside, whatever I want to give the worms. And I always feel better being able to get rid of all my household scraps that way rather than throwing it in the trash, sending it to the landfill. If you're a worm farmer, you know what I'm talking about. So the system that we're going to be checking in on today is right behind me over here on the wall. It's a bin with African night crawlers living in it. And I've kind of gotten into the habit of thinking about this one as my leap day system. And that's because, as you can see on the label, the system was launched off on leap day, on the 29th of February, a day that only occurs on the calendar once every four years. And these little guys were last fed 11 days ago. And even though that doesn't seem like a long time, I'm thinking they're probably due for a feeding. So we're going to get them up on the bench and we're going to get them fed. So let's get started. Between the last check-in and today, the system experienced its 100th day in service. So happy 100 days in service, 100 plus days at this point. And a couple other things you'll notice here, what we've already mentioned was 11 days since the last feeding. Um, but the novelty of this bin is the cotton towel, the cotton fabric test that kind of officially on the calendar began 34 days ago, but I've got it like a modified counter in my tracking spreadsheet that really started the official composting of that cotton 11 days ago when we actually took the cotton towel and we finally submerged it below the surface. Because um, up until then, we had just kept draping it out here on the, on the top surface because it kind of looked cool. <laughs> but by being out on the surface, it really wasn't seeing a whole lot of action. I mean, it was covered by this piece of cardboard here, but other than that, it was, for the most part, pretty dry. And it did seem like if we want to see that cotton towel go anywhere, as far as composting goes, it's going to have to be down in the bin, combined with the foods that the system is being fed, and it was only that way that we would expect to see any real action happening. So uh, 11 days now, I'm thinking, is really the, the true amount of time that that cotton has been getting exposed regularly to worm traffic. So uh, 11 days might not seem like a very long interval, but you know I got a couple things coming up over the next few days that are going to keep me preoccupied. And it seemed like... The next earliest time I'd be able to really get down here and tend to my worm systems is almost a week from now. So I figured I would try to uh, spend a couple days prior to getting really busy and sort of get ahead on the curve. So in this case, 11 days would normally probably not be the amount of time that I would wait between feedings. I'd usually go a little bit longer, but um, in this case we we're going to check in a little bit sooner. Not to mention the fact that I am curious to see how the towel is coming along now that it's finally been um, set up in such a way that it should get should get subjected to some decent worm traffic finally by being placed down into the system with the food that the worms got last time 11 days ago. The way we did it was we um, we sort of laid one end of the towel down into this little ditch that we dug in the middle of the bin rested some food on it, folded that thing over, rested some food on it, folded it again so the the towel was sort of folded back and forth a few times each fold getting a little chunk of uh, a little fr a little portion of food so that the uh, the worms would be motivated to approach the towel um, from all angles basically. And it was all kinds of juicy stuff. There was, um, I think there might have been some bananas, other things, you know. Before we get too far along, this, I've got this Mosquito Dunks BTI solution handy, and I'm only doing this because I thought I saw a few flying insects, and I don't know if they came out of this system. There's really one system where I've been observing a great deal of flying insect activity. And I'd like to keep it that way, so I'm, I'm almost treating this as a preventative measure, whether I'm certain of um, flying insects being in a system or not. I'm trying to get in the habit of just applying that stuff in a 
in a way that's really more meant to be preventative versus the one system where I, where I definitely know the, the flying insects have made themselves at home and over there I'm applying this stuff um, in order to really try to combat the situation and eliminate the flying insects so I was you know kind of thinking about how am I going to get this thing out of here in such a way that we can take a good look at it it did seem to me like sort of just reaching it under it and pulling it out would be the way to go I mean in time the worms will start breaking this towel down and it'll start falling to pieces and everything but at this early stage after 11 days only I would think that it's probably still going to be holding together as one single object so I thought it'd be fun to just sort of slowly unfold it and take a peek at what the worms are doing in a way I did sort of expect to come in here and like for example this banana peel I think this banana might have actually been placed in here with some banana inside the peel it's usually not the case usually the worms are just getting banana peels which just happens to be the food on the menu today too in addition to some coffee um, but a banana peel usually gets stripped clean of all the yummy fruit inside of it uh, first and then the worms will continue to work the peel the stem everything will get worked down over time but it's um it's sort of a staged breakdown with the more soft easy to eat stuff getting consumed first and then the tougher materials getting consumed later over time so in the case of this banana it seems like they've hardly done anything to it I mean I did I did wonder if perhaps by positioning the foods under folds of cotton towel whether it would be so obscured that the worms would have a hard time accessing it and perhaps they did perhaps they had a little bit of a tough time getting in here to get at that stuff so maybe we would have seen a little bit more activity if it had just been placed into the system without the towel being in the way or perhaps if we'd just given them a little bit more time more of the worms would have been, been able to squeeze their way in between the folds of the towel to gain access to the yummy foods so uh, I guess you know I guess I did in a way anticipate finding leftovers after only 11 days and that's part of the reason I came down here with a fairly small portion of food for them it's only two banana peels that I'm adding today and a, a day's worth of coffee so this was a um at first I didn't know but now I could tell just from the fibrous appearance of it it was a half of a lemon and a lot of times you can still sense the citrus odor or scent of things like that when you put them into the worm bins but in this case it seems like they've broken it down to the point where I can't really sense the uh, the citrusy smell of it and I'm wondering at this point have we unfolded the entire towel and observed all the worm activity inside of it it does seem that way and we've got a few leftovers remaining over here which I think like I said earlier was probably to be expected considering the fairly short period of time that has passed since we fed them but I figured 11 days might be an opportunity to see a little bit of warm activity down within the towel perhaps if we had come back six days from now after 17 days perhaps they would have um, made their way into the towel in greater numbers and it would have been more exciting or who knows maybe they would have already by that time broken down uh, the food to the point where they were already skedaddling and moving on to find more food elsewhere uh, I just saw this little um, worm cocoon here that I, I put out onto the tip of my index finger to make it easier to see so I thought I would just bring it up to the camera so you guys could check it out it's not very light in color meaning it's probably been in the bin now for a, a few days I believe that um, it takes somewhere between three and four weeks for a, uh, a worm cocoon to go from being deposited by the worm um, and actually producing the baby worms. 
So that one probably still has a little ways to go, but not much more. So I guess what I'm contemplating here is how to set this next feeding up. It almost seems like now that we've spread the towel out pretty nicely, maybe the way to um, proceed would be to once again fold things over, but perhaps not the way we did before, perhaps just by leaving it the way it is now. We can, um, perhaps we could start by placing in the, uh, the older foods down into this lower level and then proceeding with the folding over of the the towel on top of it onto which we can start bringing in some of the newly added foods such as these banana peels and I thought there was only two here it looks like we've got three actually and this stuff was frozen and then it thawed out and then it was um, kind of left in a place where it just was able to dry so they're a little bit dry but I don't think that's going to be a problem why don't we um why don't we combine the feeding with a little bit of grit which the worms can often make good use of and you know what I've also got this uh, old feeding zone indicator that we can incorporate as sort of supplemental bedding to go in there with the food because we've got a replacement feeding zone indicator right here and as far as bedding goes that really wasn't a whole lot you know in a way I do consider the towel itself as sort of bedding that goes hand in hand with the feeding and then um, you know the old feeding zone indicator going in there the way it just did can also serve as supplemental bedding too my thought was that perhaps at the end we can come in with my box of leaves and create a nice top coating of leafy matter which in the end would maybe sit out here on the surface and remain somewhat dry and not see a whole lot of worm traffic but in time we will blend it into the system at which point it will become um, more of a bedding at first it'll just sort of be a top dressing now I've got this um, little collection of old breadcrumbs here that I thought I'd sprinkle some in of and I've also got another similar looking material but this is my worm chow and it seems like my worm chow is just not seen a lot of action lately because of those breadcrumbs I've been trying to do away with so I figured let's get the the worm chow out here too one of these days we got to see that stuff vanish too so I can make more or at least come up with an excuse to make more now top leaves you know we'll um we'll go grab that off the shelf but first why don't we cover up the feeding zone we'll do so by reaching to the outer edges of the bin to bring in some material that's out there to cover up with at the same time that material will also gain the benefit of having been aerated as a result of us digging it up and spreading it around and oh well here's some of that old leafy matter that was laid out as top dressing last time I guess we'll also be at the same time blending in some of the top dressing to make that bedding too now by being combined with the surrounding materials so let's uh let's see about getting things leveled off i do want the towel to remain submerged so that the worms feel comfortable coming at it from all different angles i wouldn't want to see it getting dry and uh i think before we sprinkle the leaves out on top i'm also going to come back in with just another good measure application of the mosquito dunks BTI solution it uh, just seems like just seems like I'm seeing a little bit of flying insect activity I'd like to think that they've not moved in here or even if they're thinking about it that this stuff will stop them in their tracks so now there we go I just needed to go over to my shelf and grab my collection of leaves with which we will give the whole system a nice top dressing we don't need to go too overboard with this stuff I think that should be adequate right there and in can come our feeding zone indicator showing us where we last fed right over there and um, I was keeping this piece of bubble wrap around. The bubble wrap had been 
what the system was covered up with originally until we switched over to um, just this, just this piece of cardboard anymore. But I was keeping the bubble wrap around thinking that it might be a good thing to have nearby just in case we decided to um, or if we wanted to pull the towel out set it aside so we can work on the bin but it seems like we can work in the bin just fine without needing to fully remove the, um, the towel so I think at this point we're just gonna get rid of this bubble wrap I'll clean it off and put it back up on the shelf so that if it's needed elsewhere it's available but um, I think that brings us to the end of the check-in so we'll leave it this way for now and, um, and once again, guys, happy 100 days in service, 106 days to be in service, to be exact. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.